Hi everyone, it's Marissa from Bumblebee Apothecary. On my channel, I like to show how to make organic handcrafted skincare and baby products, and I also talk about natural lifestyle tips. On this video, I'd like to talk about my all natural cloth diaper routine. I have used cloth diapers for both of my kids. I would say 90% of the time. I will do a disposable if we're gonna be out all day or if we're on vacation or something like that, but for the most part, we're at home and we use cloth. So I wanna just go through what I use and what my wash routine looks like and some different things I've learned along the way. I know there's a lot of different ideas out there, different things that work for different people. Different water will be a factor. This is what has worked for me, and I just thought I would share it with you. The type of diapers that I use are pre-folds with a cover. There are a lot of different styles of cloth diapers out there today. There's the all-in-ones and pocket diapers and all different kinds of things. And depending on why you choose to cloth diaper, you might go with different designs, but one of the reasons that I did was because it saves money rather than having to buy disposables full time. And plus it's nicer to be able to just have cloth instead of, I'm not really sure what all goes into making commercial disposable diapers. So a little bit more of a natural way too. So um, in the interest of saving money, I decided to go with the pre-folds and a cover because that is really the cheapest way that you can go. What happened to my pins here? Here they are. And so I'm just gonna talk about my system here. I went with Green Mountain pre-folds. I did try a few different styles of pre-folds when I was first starting out and I ended up liking these the best. They seem to be the thickest and made the best of everything that I've tried. I went with the unbleached and just the regular, but they do have an organic option. And if I end up needing more pre-folds in the future, I think I will go with the organic. But I was really happy with these compared to a few others that I tried. And I did also want to mention that this video is not sponsored by anyone at all. This is all just completely my opinion and experience. So no, nobody sponsored anything here. But so pre-folds come from Green Mountain Diapers and I'm gonna link below also all the sources for everything that I'm talking about here in case you're interested in looking that up. Okay, and then the cover that I use, I tried a lot of different covers when Lily was a baby and because I had heard that you really have to try a bunch to find out what works best for you and your baby and all that. So the ones that I definitely ended up liking the best are Thirsties and they have a few different styles, but the one that I like the best is the Duo Snap. Now you can get covers that are supposed to fit your baby from basically newborn all the way to potty training, but I find that the ones that do come in two different sizes actually do end up working a bit better because they just fit the smaller size better and then the larger size better. So that's what these come in and I didn't grab the smaller size, but it looks just the same. It's just a little bit smaller. So I have two sizes for when they're littler and then this bigger one, which is the size that he wears now. I have tried it without pinning and just laying it in there, but the baby ends up looking really bulky and their clothes fit nicer and it just looks better, I think, when you go ahead and pin. So that's why I do that. You're getting tired for nap time? Yeah? You're getting sleepy for nap time? I think so. Yeah. Okay, I had to go put him down for his nap because it was time. So let me show you how I use the pre-folds with the cover. There are a few different ways that you can do this. You can fold them in thirds like this. You can roll up the sides. Both of those methods would use no pins and they just go inside the cover. I lay the baby on the diaper flat like this. You fold the front into thirds and bring it up and then you pin both of those corners. And then the cover just goes underneath and you just bring that up and snap that way. I 
to also show what it looks like on a baby as well here. So I'm just undoing the snaps here. And a little side note is it's better to actually use two hands when you're undoing the snaps. They'll last longer that way. But I was also holding my phone camera at the same time. So um, it just folds up again like that. And then you bring the snaps around depending on where you want it to fit. And here it is all done and snapped up. The Thirsties covers are very nice because within the two sizes, they are very adjustable. You see all the snaps here. They can adjust to go smaller and then grow larger within those two sizes. So they're very customizable and you can get a really good fit so you don't have to worry about leaks and they're nice and comfortable and all of that. Um, they also fit the best in terms of not leaking compared to the other cloth diaper covers that I've tried out there. They have this nice little gusset around the leg that keeps it so that there's not like a piece of edge sticking out that can wick onto their clothes or blankets and get things wet. So it just keeps it all nice and contained and they really fit the best. Again, everybody's baby is different too and so I know that different babies do better with different covers but this is what has worked for me really, really well. Really like these. So let's talk about wipes next. Also from Green Mountain Diapers, there are these cloth wipes that you can get in a pack of a bunch of them, I think 36 or so. But they have flat flannel on one side and they have terry cloth on the other side. And they work so, so well. I really like them. Whenever I have to go use um, disposable wipes temporarily, I'm always really happy to come back to these just because they work so well. And so with these, you can do a couple different things. You can use plain water to get them wet, or you can do a wipe solution. I have this kind that I'm gonna do another video on eventually that I show how to make, but it's nice it's a spray so it's got um witch hazel which you know is really soothing for skin and helps with cleaning and all that kind of stuff and then there's some jojoba oil and a tiny tiny little bit of baby safe essential oils that help with soothing skin and preventing diaper rash and stuff like that and the jojoba oil is nice and moisturizing so there's that you can get the pre-made spray or you can get the concentrate that you add to witch hazel to make refills for the spray bottle or you can get a kit that has both of them all those are in my etsy shop and like i said i'm going to do a video showing how to make these too if you'd like to make them yourself so you can just spray that right on the wipe as you're about to use it or another thing that you can do is you can get a wet bag or even a like a plastic zip bag would work too, but you can put a bunch of wipes in there and then you can make up a bunch of solution and then just keep them in there wet. That's really easy and nice because then you can just pull some out and use them. You don't have to stop and spray them or stop and get them wet, whatever. So that's something that I like to do. And then once the diaper is wet or dirty and then the wipes too, um, it kind of depends on the age of the baby and what they're eating. If they're still nursing, then everything can just go you don't have to get rid of the poop at all but if it's an older baby who's eating solids and things like that then you need to get rid of the poop in the toilet and i don't use a diaper sprayer or anything i kind of thought about it but i never really felt like it was necessary and not everybody was happy with them anyway and they cost kind of a lot of money so i never did that i just used something like a old knife to scrape it off into the toilet and then I use a wet bag for all the dirty ones. So this is one from Planet Wise. Both of these wet bags are from Planet Wise. And again, I'm gonna link links to everything in the description box below so that you can find exactly what I'm using here and where to find it if you'd like to find it. Dirty diaper goes right into, and the wipes go right into this wet bag and then it can stay in here for a few days. And then when it's full, I wash it. So what I do is I just dump, I just open the bag and dump the whole thing and put the bag in the washing machine. And figuring out how to wash cloth diapers for me, it was a little bit of a learning curve because there's also a ton of information out there about how you should do it, how you shouldn't do it, and all this kind of stuff. And 
So I'm going to talk a little bit about that and what I learned. So basically, um, I was buying into the things that you read that say there's only the certain kind of detergent that you should use. There's only cloth diaper safe detergents and you shouldn't use like regular detergents and things like that. And um, it turns out that the mainstream regular detergents actually do a better job and that the ones that they were saying were cloth diaper safe were too wimpy to actually get the diapers clean. So I had some trouble with some rashes and even some burns for a little bit there, which was kind of frustrating. And then I found this great website called flufflouveuniversity.com and I'm going to put a link to that below. It has a ton of information about washing cloth diapers and common problems that you can run into and how to remedy them. So what I ended up having to do was strip my cloth diapers and they talk on there about how to do it and kind of start over from square one and then start washing correctly. So I found out that hard water plays a big part in getting cloth diapers clean and that if you have hard water, you have to figure out how to combat that. So um, what I had to end up doing is I still wanted to use a nice natural detergent without like optical brighteners and of course synthetic fragrances and um, dyes and all that kind of stuff. So what I needed to do was actually add something to soften the water during the washing process. So I ended up adding borax. You can use Calgon too, but that has some fragrances in it that I wanted to stay away from. So what my wash routine looks like now is I use Boulder Clean Laundry Detergent, which I love. Here's what it looks like. Boulder Clean comes in a nice giant jug, super concentrated too, and it lasts forever. As far as natural laundry detergents go, it's great. It works really well. If you have a Costco membership and your Costco carries it, you can get it there for a great price, a fraction of the price of getting like seventh generation or something at another place. So really, really like it. Works so well and doesn't cost a lot. So anyway, I use that detergent. And then for water softening, here's Borax. You can look for this in Walmart and it's pretty inexpensive. Also lasts a long time. So what happens is the plant-based, more natural detergents don't have built-in water softeners, and so they're ineffective at getting the diapers clean like they need to be. And so stuff just builds up and stays in there, and that's when you get all the problems with rashes and even burns and different things like that. So by adding borax or another type of softening agent to the plant-based detergents, then you get that water softening power without sacrificing the rest of the properties of the detergent that you wanted to use. I do two cycles. I do a pre-cycle. Um, the website that I talked about, Fluff Love University, will tell you exactly what your wash routine should look like based on what washing machine that you have. So usually you have to do two cycles. You have to do a pre-wash. For me, it just looks like a normal wash cycle on hot with detergent, and then you when that one is done, you open up the door, kind of move everything around, and then you do a heavier wash cycle on my washing machine. It's called Whites, so it's hot again, and I put heavy soil, and then that one I put a full amount of detergent plus Vorax and let that wash, and then everything goes into the dryer except for the covers and the wet bags. I hang those to dry just because they last longer that way. And then the wipes and, and pre-folds go into the dryer until they're dry and then they're ready to start all over again. And I haven't had no trouble with that since um, learning how to do the wash routine properly. So that was a great resource. I wanted to share that website. The last thing that I wanted to go over is some things that you can do if you end up with diaper rash, some things that I've learned. So there's different diaper rashes that your baby, depending on what is causing it, and that will determine how you treat it. So if it's something like a dirty diaper that's just been on there too long, I know we've always said those are certain things that we, as parents we would never do, but sometimes circumstances just happen and it happens in any way. If it does, the best thing for that is the diaper cream. This is the heaviest duty treatment that you can do. It works very nicely. It's got zinc oxide in it, which creates a nice barrier to help keep things off of the skin while it's healing. And then it also has some skin healing essential oils of really light dilution of those, and then some nourishing plant oils too that help soothe the skin. So that works really well for really bad diaper rashes, heavy duty. 
also I wanted to mention with the diaper creams that contain zinc oxide, you don't really want to use them with a cloth diaper. So if you have a bad rash that you're trying to treat, um, you want to switch to dis disposables until that's cleared up while you're using the zinc oxide diaper cream. And then if you have a milder one, like maybe there's a food that your baby kind of reacted to, kind of, I don't know, maybe acidic fruit or something like that, then either one of these can work really nicely, the healing salve or the tallow balm. Um, tallow balm is really great for just kind of soothing and moisturizing and heals up skin so, so fast and nicely. So that's usually what I'll go to for something like that. And that is safe for with the cloth diapers. You don't have to switch to a different kind for that. And then same thing with the healing salve. It can be used with cloth diapers safely. And this is great if there's like a sort of a yeast type of a little bit to the, to the rash. Like it seems a little bit like that might be kind of going on. Then it really helps with that. The herbs help to combat that. So that's what I have learned for rashes and that is basically all of my experience with cloth diapers and things that I learned and what works best for us. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I'm going to link everything in the description box below so that you can find it all and if you have any opinions or questions or anything that you want to share or ask, be sure to leave a comment. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos on how to make organic handcrafted skincare and baby products and healthy lifestyle tips, be sure to, to subscribe so that you can see more of those videos. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.